All children, I find, love to draw, and it gets to a point where they stop drawing. But I liked the humorous drawing and the naughty drawing, the little cheeky drawing that was sort of stirred. Most children do like this. Drawing is a primal kind of thing. It doesn't speak to the mind. It speaks to the heart a bit more, and to the emotions and to the subconscious. I had somehow a bit of courage to just say what I thought, but try and make, make it into a form, like a poetic form, something that wasn't just bland, me blabbing on about what I thought. It was trying to be lyrical and evoke something and the mystery of life. These were just the natural philosopher and a young kid. Most kids are like this. They say to you, you know, what happens when you die? You know, this is the same thing that kept going in me. What is going on here? Is this really... Is this political system as serious as it looked? Are these people genuine? You, know, you ask rude questions within yourself. So that's what a cartoonist does, a political cartoonist in the tradition. You ask improper questions, but you do it in a sort of a charming, accessible way, and you express what is repressed. That's what I was doing. I was expressing the questions that are repressed, that you don't dare ask, because it's not proper. But a cartoonist is given a license in a good newspaper to be a little improper a very strict tradition in cartooning. You've got to do a punchline that everyone gets and appeals to everyone. But I said, I said, yeah, but people have a little poetic dimension in them. They have a mystery. That's why they hear music. They don't have to get music. They just kind of goes into them and they say, yes, I like that. And I thought, why can't a cartoon be like that? It's a picture. That's all it is to me. It's got to be lyrical or mysterious or funny or touching. It's like a little song except it's just with a line. And I, I stepped away from the normal conventions of cartooning, of the punchline, or just picking on political mistakes. My natural interest was, what is my part in this? What is our part in the mess we're in? And be touching, open it up, don't nail it. I'm more interested in pulling the nails out and opening it. If you're open with your art, you're open with each other, you're open with yourself, and things flow and I think we're tight and constricted. So part of a cartoonist, this cartoonist's work, is to be maybe a liberating influence to the extent I can. It's, these are not the normal subjects of cartoons in newspapers. <laughs> I start by being conscious of what seems to be in the air, what's in the zeitgeist. I start from that point, saying, what can I offer here? What can I say about this that makes sense of it? that makes a little bit of meaning or gives perspective to it, or humanizes a very dehumanizing world or something. And then I start playing with that, and I, it's a playful, experimental mess I make on the paper, drawing and destroying the drawing, and it gets worse and it gets worse, and I go, oh God, I can't do this, this is terrible. And so I become a little primal in my process. I, I'm not in control of the drawing, like a great drafts person or something. Just a bit lost and I think I need to get lost a lot. Some of my best work comes if I do lose my way and then have to find something in the mess or in the lostness. All you've got to offer is yourself, your own experience, your own kind of philosophy. That's all you've got. You've got to be able to make your mistakes and be forgiven because in your mistakes find you find the new pathways I think. It's not just about being a clever commentator, it's about enlightening and humanising. It's just bringing ourselves to life and that's part of the process. It's not just political consciousness raising, it's just consciousness raising and making feelings seem worthwhile and fertile and productive and useful to a, to a saner world. I think it's about sanity, basically. Somewhere the work is about a very improbable depiction of, of a healthier, kinder, saner world, and a funnier world, and a more poetic world. And I, I know it's working when I'm laughing at it, as I'm drawing it, and enjoying it, and lost in it. That's, you know, because if, if you don't enjoy making a piece of work, when well, no one's going to enjoy looking at it. That's, that's, a, that's a basic principle. And if you can't open yourself up, you can't open other people up, and other people won't open. People open to your work to the extent you've opened up in the making of that work and made yourself vulnerable and offered something for better or for worse. And things work in mysterious ways. 
I guess the characters I've drawn were not designed so much. They just came off the end of the pen a little bit. They're incredibly ridiculous looking because they have noses that are far too big and eyes that are too big. And they're always in profile, so they're very simplistic. They're more like hieroglyphs. They are just more like symbols. And it's fairly simple, you know, this profile of this galoot, this sort of strange fool of a person. I think I'm drawing the human spirit or aspects of the human spirit and, and everyone can look at this dopey character I draw and say, ha, this is not a handsome person. Look at their nose, look at their bad posture, look at them stumbling along. And so everyone can feel a bit, you know, in control. <laughs> You know, in the square on the page where the cartoon is contained, that's like a stage. It's a little stage, and then I put these characters in and they interact and they say words or a duck walks on. And the first duck came into my cartooning work simply because I just felt a duck should be in the drawing. As simple as that. If I could put a bit of herb in a cookie and it adds a touch. I got sick of the fact that political commentary is always about us humans. Maybe subconsciously I'm saying, come on, turn to the little primal thing, the little innocent thing, the intuitive thing that just waddles on regardless. And I think, well, we've all got an inner dark, you know, and <laughs> it's as if I'm referring to an aspect of our human character which we might neglect too much and which we might turn to sometimes when we get a bit sad or lost. But maybe, you know, you have a little intuition in there, a playfulness, a good nature, an innocence. Remember it and feed it. <laughs>